The Spitfire was developed in response to a request by the British government in 1934 for a new modern fighter, but was not accepted when proposed. Development, however, continued, and in 1936, only a few months after the Hawker Hurricane's first flight, the Spitfire took off for the first time. Further development would see her become the Spitfire we could all recognize as the Mark 1A. Soon after, the government adopted the new Majestic aircraft and placed an initial order of 310 units. However, development issues would delay the initial production until 1938. Now, usually, this is where I would list the various modifications made over an aircraft's lifetime and the changes they included. Doing that for the Spitfire, however, is harder since there are 24-something variants, not even counting for the Seafires or other modifications made in smaller amounts. So instead, I will simply list the major changes, which are as follows. The first Spitfires were armed with eight 303 machine guns, which carried lots of ammo and a good fire rate, but were as powerful as staplers against modern aircraft due to their low caliber. It was also early on in the Spitfire's evolution that they switched from a twin-bladed wood prop to a triple-bladed metal prop. Just before the Battle of Britain, there were experiments to mount 20mm Hispano autocannons to the wings in place of four of the 303 machine guns. Initial problems, however, and dissatisfaction with the performance prevented them from being used in the front lines, but once these bugs were worked out, they were made standard in the Spitfire Mark II B variant. Several variants down the line, minor adjustments had been made to the airframe, improvements to the engine and propeller were integrated, and hardpoints were also created to allow the use of RP-3 rockets and bombs. It was also around this time that trials were made using just four Hispano autocannons as the primary armament, with no secondary armament to back them up. This didn't catch on until belt-fed Hispanos were more reliable and available, since they initially had a low ammo count due to only being able to accept drum magazines, which were big and bulky. It was also this time that experiments were made clipping the wingtips of Spitfires to allow a higher roll rate at the trade of climbing and turning capabilities. This was a common practice in the field as some pilots preferred the former, while others the latter, so it was up to the pilot's discretion if they wanted clipped wingtips or not. The final few variants of the Spitfire saw the armament be made to two 50 caliber M2 Brownings and two Hispano 20mm autocannons. They also saw the introduction of the famed Griffin engine and new propeller, which allowed the Spitfire to excel at high altitude and have an impressive top speed of over 700 km per hour. The Seafire FR-47 would be the penultimate Spitfire, having a contra-rotating propeller, quad 20mm with ammo belts, and other minor airframe improvements. They saw a limited amount of action in early Korea, but were soon retired in 1949. Experiments to evolve the Spitfire were tried with the Supermarine Spiteful and Seafang, but never catched on as the Jet Age approached. As many people know, the Spitfire flew from the very beginning of the war to the very end, seeing the evacuation of Dunkirk, the Battle of Britain, the invasion of Italy, the D-Day landings, everything. Many Spitfires exist today, with the majority of them in museums, they haven't shown up as much in air races as the P-51 had, but several still fly today under certain museums and heritage foundations. But the main reason they don't show up even more is due to a lack of spare parts, and also the fact that airframes are very rare.